the so make the heading amniotic fluid now so before describing the amniotic fluid i should draw certain diagrams to show where this amniotic fluid is exactly located or present see so this is developing fetus okay and uh, this developing fetus is you can say surrounded by one membrane okay this inner membrane of the fetus is called as amnion okay i'm just showing by the this pink color this layer is called as the amnion okay and this is female reproductive part and here is the placenta okay and this placenta you can say is connected to this baby you can say there is in her abdominal region her or his abdominal region to the placenta there is one connection and this connection is called as the yeah this connection is called as the umbilical cord so you should write it down it is your umbilical cord okay this is placenta okay and this is the innermost layer of the fetus that is called as the amnion amnion okay and outer to the amnion outer to the amnion there is another layer is present and this layer is called as the chorion okay this chorion it 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 help to provide the protection it help to provide the protection for developing fetus now this is the chorion and these two are the fetal membrane this is the fetus membrane okay now in the you can say amnion inside the amnion in this there is one cavity okay called as the amniotic sac this cavity is called as the amniotic sac and this amniotic sac is filled with one fluid okay this amniotic cell is sac is filled with one fluid and that fluid is called as the amniotic fluid so this fluid as i am showing you this fluid is called as the amniotic fluid got the points So what is this this is the amniotic fluid now you know that after the implantation on the 7th week after the you can say the fertilization on the 7th 7th day there is a the implantation or also called as the nudation okay also called as the nudation or plus the uh, implantation is happening fine and the, the you can say the impl, 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 
those implanting structure okay is the blastocyst okay a blastocyst and blastocyst will develop the two kind of layer which we already discussed in our previous lecture i'm just briefly summarizing this two layers uh, called as the inner cell mass and outer cell mass inner cell mass is also called as the embryo embryo blast okay and this embryo blast will help to develop develop the fetus okay develop this uh, fetus okay but outer cell mass they have the two you can say uh, kind of layer called as the uh, syntrophoblast okay and kinotrophoblast these trophoblast the outer cell mass they will develop one villi called as the microvilli yeah and these microvilli is going to attached with this endometrial lining of the uterus okay endometrium lining of the uterus and then what happened this endometrium lining when they attach this is called as the decidua this these things we already discussed so this decidua initially what happened the embryo you can say the blastocyst will develop one finger like projection called as the microvilli this microvilli get attached here this endometrial lining and from the microvilli there is a formation of placenta okay half of the placenta is formed by the fetal part and half of the by the maternal blood vessels okay and through this placenta uh, there you can say the in, in initial period baby will baby will baby is getting the nutrition there is endocrine function there is excretory function respiratory function all these function is mediated or done by the placenta okay but after that there is a one you can say development of one physical connection okay and this physical connection is called as the umbilical cord okay this physical is called as the umbilical cord and it started after the eighth week okay after the eighth week uh, there is you can say formation of umbilical cord okay there is a formation of umbilical cord this umbilical cord is about the 40 cm in length and 1.5 cm in diameter 40 cm in length and 1.5 cm in diameter got and in this um, this umbilical cord provide the connection with this fetal umbilical umbilical part to the anterior part of the placenta okay and there is a four blood vessels for major blood vessels which help in the circulation of the blood which help in the circulation of the blood so this is about the umbilical cord got the points no problem now this amnion and corion uh, this corneon membrane okay it first provide first form this amniotic cavity or amniotic sac where this there is presence of amniotic fluid okay amniotic fluid and this also provide the protection from that you can say the infections the intrauterine infections it's basically isolate the developing fetus okay now what is the fate of this amniotic fluid so first we have to understand the general characteristics about the amniotic fluid so how you are going to define first okay how you define the amniotic fluid so amniotic fluid is yeah it's a first write it down it's a watery fluid okay initially it is a colorless watery colorless fluid okay now about their volume so their volume varies according to the development of the fetus their volume is varying okay their volume is the varying fine now initially if we talked about the 12th week of pregnancy it is a 50 ml if we talked about the 20th week it's about the 400 ml okay so if we talked about the volume as i said it's varies in the 12th week of the pregnancy the volume is about the 50 ml okay in the 20th week of the pregnancy it is about 400 ml okay 
now near the term called as 36 to 37 week the volume becomes one liter and during the labor time during the parturition or delivery time the volume become 600 to 800 ml okay this is about the volume this is about the volume of the amniotic fluid now why i am writing all these information why i am citing all these volumes there's a reason because sometimes what happens there's a two conditions okay there's a two conditions which we have to understand here the first condition is called as polyhydrominoes and another condition is called as the oligohydrominoes so write it down polyhydraminoes okay another con condition is called as the oligohydraminoes now if the volume of amniotic fluid is it's elevated it become the 2000 ml it is called as the polyhydrominose it is called as the polyhydrominose now this polyhydrominose this is you can say the problem okay and this problem is mainly uh, due to the the exact cause is unknown the etiology of this polyhydrominose is unknown but the sonography reveals that there will be a deficient absorption or there may be the excessive production if we talked about the etiology of the polyhydrominose the, the etiology of the polyhydrominose is the, either the poor absorption or excessive secretion okay no problem this amniotic fluid is also sometimes in some textbook you came across is also called as the liquid amni liquid amni so don't confuse is both liquid amni and amniotic fluid is the same thing so if the volume of the amniotic fluid exceed uh, to the level of 2000 ml this is called as the polyhydrominose conditions and the you can see we talked about the etiology the cause the exact cause is unknown but it's believed uh, by the sonograph it's confirmed that there will be a either a deficient absorption or poor absorption or and there will be a excessive secretion excessive secretion of the amniotic fluid okay this is uh, sometimes seen in the multiple pregnancy okay polyhydrominose is seen in the multiple pregnancy multiple pregnancy means uh, when mother is bearing more than one fetus that condition is you heard about the twins baby that is called as the multiple pregnancy so this is seen in the multiple pregnancy okay and sometimes in the one there is one condition where the there will be a uh, you can say defective development in the uh, nervous system okay mainly the forebrain and that condition is called as the N in aneocephaly okay that condition is called as the aneocephaly this is a central nervous system in development defect aneocephaly where uh, the baby is born uh, without uh, you can say the forebrain okay without the forebrain the, and this condition is called as the aneocephaly so 50 percent of the aneocephaly uh, is you can say related with the polyhydrominose and multiple pregnancy also this polyhydrominose is seen in the oligo um, oligohydrominose the volume you, uh, you can say that during the term during the parturition okay the volume becomes less than yeah volume becomes less than 200 ml volume become less than 200 ml you know during the parturition time volume should be 600 to 800 ml but here it is less than 200 ml and this oligo hydrominoes its result is it's a fatal condition first of all okay it's resulting into the death of the child understood and the common etiology is uh, either a, a, you can say the pregnant female is have the hypertensive disorder or you call it the pre-eclampsia or eclampsia where uh, her 
her uh, blood pressure is pathologically you can say elevated then there may, there may be the dehydration the pregnant woman is dehydrated or maybe there is a uh, defect or there is a problem in the circulation of utero placental okay there may be the utero placental insufficiency got the point so these are the two conditions related with the volume of amniotic fluid with the volume of amniotic fluid now let's talk about the origin so as i said the origin is believed the exact origin is also not understood but the origin is believed mixed with both the maternal as well as developing fetus so origin is from the both side maternal and fetus okay if we talked about their circulation okay we talked about the circulation of this fluid so this fluid circulation you can see the watery portion which we are going to uh, deal the composition but first here understand the circulation uh, of the water of the amniotic fluid is replaced in every 3 hour okay every 3 hour it is replaced okay so one way to you can say to clear Uh, the excretory material is by by the amniotic fluid circulation okay then what is mean how it's defined that every 3 hours this fluid is replaced the water portion of the fluid is replaced the thing is uh, when you insert the radioactive sodium in the in this amniotic cavity it seen that it's replaced in every 3 hours every 3 hours got the points no problem now after discussing the circulation let's go and define first the composition okay composition of amniotic fluid composition the composition of amniotic fluid is you can say divided into the two parts one portion contain you know the every uh, mainly the most of the you can say the cellular constituents if we talked about the cellular composition then largely the portion occupied by the water so here also the 98 to 99% percent, 98 to 99% percent is water okay rest 1 to 2% percent, okay rest 1 to 2% percent is the solid particles solid particles now the solid particles it is again you can say divided into the three types the one is called you just write it down one is organic part organic another one is the inorganic and another is the suspended particles suspended particles Okay, so I have some certain issue with the, my camera. Okay, so you just write it down as I'm dictating. You just write it down. Uh, the composition of the amniotic fluid is divided into the two parts. As I said, the most of the composition of our cellular environment is mainly occupied by the water. So here also, the 98 to 99 percent. of this fluid is occupied by the water and rest 1 to 2% is about the solid particles this solid this 1 to 2% solid part solid, solid particles it is uh, you can say it contain the three types of things the first one is organic inorganic and suspended particles the organic portion contain 0.3% protein 20 you can say mg in percent the 20 mg glucose okay it also contain the 30 mg urea 2 mg creatinine so this is about the organic part of the uh, this amniotic fluid okay and if we talked about the inorganic mainly in the inorganic portion Uh, there is a sodium potassium and chloride ion sodium potassium and chloride ion okay and in the suspended particles Uh, you can say there is a presence of lingo okay this is again new term for you 
L A N G U O Lango. This Lango is a hair like covering of in you can say the fetus. When the fetus is developing, and there is one hair membrane is developed around the fetus. Got the point? And uh, this help to protect the developing fetus from the temperature and from the various you can say circulating hormones. Okay, mainly it's shade, uh, shade near the term it will shade. Okay, and you will not see in the you can say the normal delivery time. But if there will be a premature birth, okay, you know the premature birth is considered as before the 37th week birth. It's called as the premature birth, okay. So this premature birth baby, uh, you can commonly see in this presence of the lingo. So this uh, lingo is present in the suspended particles. Apart from it, uh, there is a, some, you can say some cells, like squamous cells, and uh, the cells from the respiratory tract of the fetus, cells from the urinary tract of the fetus, some of the vaginal cells, it is present in the suspended parts. Now, you know, if there is a presence of the cell in the amniotic fluid, it means if by some means, if by some method, if we, you can say, take some fluid from this amniotic uh, sac, and if we analyze it laboratorically, then we will, you can say, we reveal so many things about the fetus, isn't it? And there's a technique, and this technique is called as the amino synthesis. Write it down. This technique is called as the amino synthesis. Amino synthesis. So in the amino synthesis, under the observation of ultrasonography, a physician, you can say, extract some of the fluids, and that fluid is laboratorily analyzed. That fluid can reveal about the genetic genetics of the female genetics of the fetus genetics of the fetus apart from it uh, the neural tube defect neural tube defect other congenital problems congenital uh, problems so all these things can be you can say uh, revealed if we analyze the amniotic fluid through this process called as the amino synthesis one of the technique okay but you know, if uh, we take the cell, okay, if we take some of the amniotic fluid where the composition is also some of the cells in the suspended portion. So if we take uh, some fluid, if we take some cell on from that fluid, and if we karyotype, it means uh, if we if you present the you can say the genetics, then it also reveals about the sex of the child. Okay, but initially the amino synthesis is developed uh, for you can say dealing with these defects. But unfortunately, it is misused. Okay, result into the mass destruction of the female uh, fetus inside the womb, and that is uh, called as the female feticide. That is called as the female feticide. Okay, and probably I think it's, it's banned in India. Okay, female feticide. Got the point? No problem. Now, once we understood the composition, let's go and understand about the color. Color of amniotic fluid. Color. You know that the, as I said, that the color of the amniotic fluid is water like okay so it's basically the colorless so in the early phase of the pregnancy it is colorless but when once there will be a you can see this lingo formation the hair hairy you can say skin formed and also the fetus you can say digestive system start working working in terms of this fluid you can say some of the fluid is seen and uh, that some of the fluid is you can say drink by the fetus okay and which uh, you can say expelled out that called the excretory material and the excretory material of the fetus is called as muconium okay write it down the excretory material of the developing fetus is called as the muconium and when this muconium is analyzed it seems that there is a presence of amniotic fluid okay and there is a presence of this lingo 
the hairy skin. It means it shows that some of the amniotic fluid is, you can say, drink by this developing fetus. Got the point? No problem. So the, the color become the yellow. So initially the color is in, in early phase of the pregnancy, the color is you can say colorless, the watery color, and after that it becomes the yellow. So colorless in early pregnancy and yellow in the uh, yellow in the later phase of the pregnancy, but you know, there's also a clinical significance related with the uh, analyzing the color of the fetus. If the color is the green, if the color is green, it shows, if the color is green, uh, it shows that that fetal, uh, there's a distress in the presentation of the fetus. Normal presentation of the fetus is the cephalic presentation. And you, you can say during the delivery time, okay, the fetal head should be, uh, you can say, facing the vaginal part, the birth canal. Okay, that's called the normal presentation, the cephalic presentation. But sometimes there will be a mal presentation. Mal presentation means uh, abnormal child orientation during the delivery time, some like breech presentation, okay, and other other presentation. Fine. So this, if the color will green, it shows there is a mal presentation. Fine, there is a mal presentation, or there is a, some distress in the presentation. If there will be a golden color, it shows RH incompatibility. Probably you heard in your previous classes about the RH incompatibility. RH complete incompatibility means if the mothers have the RH negative factor, okay, and if the developing fetus have RH positive factor. Okay, and that lead to the, you can say the first pregnancy is uneventful, there is no any reaction, but the subsequent, uh, you can say pregnancy result into the mass distraction of RBC, or you can say the lysis, okay, hemolysis, and that, if that, that condition is there, then the, this amniotic fluid color shows the golden color, okay, golden color. If the color appear saffron or greenish yellow it shows that there is a post maturity okay there is a post maturity and if there, this color appear as a dark okay it shows the hemorrhage okay it shows the hemorrhage so this is about the clinical significance of uh, amniotic fluid color okay now so just one summarize and then we go with the function of the amniotic fluid. So what we studied, we seen that the amniotic fluid is one special kind of fluid which is present in the amniotic sac or we can say the amniotic cavity surrounded by the amnion followed by the cation. Okay, no problem. Then we said, if we talked about their origin, the exact origin is still now unknown, but let's believe that the origin is mixed from the mother side as well as from the developing fetal side, okay? Then we've seen that this fluid is waterless, sorry, this fluid is a watery fluid, okay, or it's a colorless fluid. Then we talked about the volume, their volume varies as the fetus develop, their volume is varied. In the 12th week it's 50 ml, in 20th week it's a 4 ml, it's near the term, it's become 30, 1 liter and during the, you can say, delivery time it's become the 600 to 800 ml. Then we defined about the circulation and we said uh, in every 3 hours the watery portion of this amniotic fluid is replaced, okay, it's replaced. Then we've seen about the composition the composition of the amniotic fluid is divided into the two parts. The one part constitute 98 to 99 part constitute the water and the rest one to two point constitute this solid particle. This solid particles is again containing the three types of you can say different different types of particles. One is organic, inorganic and suspended particles. The organic particles mainly contain the less amount of urine. If we talked about their uh, exact this is a 0.3 milligram in percentage then the 20 uh, milligram of the glucose then some of the you can say the urea and the uric acid creatinine. Inorganic portion contains sodium, potassium, chloride ion and suspended particles contain the lingo and some of the epithelial cells okay from the fetal respiratory system and yeah 
from the uh, the urinary system and also from the some of the parts of the vagina then we said that uh, sometimes there is a problem in the volume okay volume abnormalities of the amniotic fluid sometimes there will be a more volume condition is called as the polyhydrominose and sometimes the less volume called as the oligohydrominose and we seen the cause we seen about uh you can say their manifestation okay then we talked about the color the color in half of the you can say the gestation period the color of the amniotic fluid is colorless but half of the uh, you can say pregnancy rest of the half of the pregnancy is you can say the uh, yellowish color okay and there is uh, you can say clinical significance related with the color if the color changes it may be green brown, you can say the dark color green color purple color okay saffron color, Color. This all color shows some of the clinical, uh, you can say, correlation, clinical um, problems. Okay. So, and we also discuss about the amino synthesis or techniques. Okay, by which we can uh, reveal the genetics. We can, you can see the neural tube defect and also see some of the uh, congenital problems or develop developmental problem. Okay. Now, now we go and discuss the function. The one thing is clear in our mind. The thing is that by seeing this diagram, you see it is, you can see in the developing period, what this fluid are doing. They are acting like a shock absorber. They are acting like a shock, shock absorber. Suppose, and you know the specific gravity, the specific gravity of this fluid is 1.001. Okay. So this specific gravity provides certain bion buoyancy. Okay, and baby is like you can say safely present in this fluid, this fluid filled environment, and it helps in the shock absorption. Okay, it's help in the shock absorption. So one of the function is to provide the protection. One of the function is to provide the protection, but there are other functions which we are going to discuss now. And remember this amniotic fluid is also called as yeah liquid amine so don't confuse both the terms are same liquid amine or amniotic fluid both are the same thing So now we are going to discuss about the function of amniotic fluid. Okay. So function of the amniotic fluid can be understood. Okay. By understanding this flow chart. So one is during what is helping during the pregnancy. during pregnancy during pregnancy during labor time means during the delivery time during labor this labor word is used labor word is used uh, in context of the delivery okay you know before the delivery okay before the delivery there is a sequential event is occurring to expel the viable product in, in, in to the out, out, outer environment okay so this all the sequential event is considered as a labor okay and one you can say a healthy delivery is marked by the three phases of the labor labor one phase one phase two phase three okay so these are three phases in the three stages of the labor okay and uh, these three stages is characterized by different different events okay if you want to know then in the first stage uh, you can say there is a labor pain okay and there is you can say expulsion of the baby's head through baby first rotate okay and then they're coming through the birth canal and in the second phase you can say the second uh, second labor phase is marked 
second liver says is marked by the second liver says is marked uh, by the rupture of the membrane this this membrane will rupture okay membrane will rupture and baby will come out they will come out and then uh, you can say there will be expulsion of in the third phase there will be expulsion of this placenta okay this uh, the umbilical cord is you can say climbed and then this cut it okay so these all the these all events is called as collectively as a labor so we are going to discuss that during the labor what this amniotic fluid is contributing how they are helping okay and the another thing is clinical function clinical function okay so the one function as we define the one function we define is that it act as a shock absorber okay so during the pregnancy time during the pregnancy time it act as a shock absorber isn't it absorber and you know due to the presence of this fluid there is a even or we can say the equal distribution of temperature so it's also helping in maintaining or you can say the even distribution of temperature fine this fluid is bactericidal in nature so it's also helping from the infection okay helping from infection the one thing which we will going when we define the physical uh, you can say the fetal physiology which we will see that the one antibody called as the igg this antibody is you can say a uh, transfer from the mother to the fetus from the mother to the fetus okay and this is you can say plenty of this antibody is present in this fluid okay so it is is it, you can say it's work as a bacterial cidal or microbial cidal means making the bacteria or virus to die okay so these functions and another function you we seen the composition we seen the composition and we noticed that the you, you, you can say the amount of protein is very less okay but another glucose is also present in the 20 mg so the nutrition requirement by this proteins and all is not you can say done okay by the amniotic fluid but the one thing we seen is that there is a more amount of water is present 98 to 99 percent fine so these the composition of water will help uh, be developing fetus okay so water is adequate water requirement of developing fetus is done by the amniotic fluid isn't it now so during the labor what in which way is helping okay as i said it's a bactericidal bactericidal and aseptic so when the baby is you can say coming th through the uh, birth canal okay uh, and then there is a chances to contaminate okay contaminate with the uh, you can say the you know part of external environment so that time is helping the baby to protect from this you can say um, protect from these microbes okay another function is this amniotic fluid when this amniotic cells rupture they help in the dilation of the cervix okay dilation of the cervix dilation of cervix got the point no problem now the another you can say problem another you can say function is it guards against umbilical cord compression okay it's guard during the labor it's guard the you can say compression of umbilical cord how see if suppose this fluid is not present 
then if, if you can say the baby is coming, then there's a chances to compress this umbilical cord. And due to this presence of this fluid, okay, there is a less compression. There is a less compression. So this function is during the labor time. Now, about the clinical function, you, we seen that through the amino synthesis, amino synthesis, uh, we can, you can say, reveal or diagnose many things about the developing fetus. Okay, one of the thing to determine is the, you can say, the genetics, genetic problem. Another one is the neural tube defect. Okay, the placental problem, the umbilical cord problem, okay, and other anomalies too. So that's the one way. Another is that sometimes uh, if it is diagnosed that the, if pregnancy will continue, then it's harmful for the, uh, you can say, mother, okay? So on that time, there are some special chemicals which is, you can say, inserted to this amniotic fluid. Okay, and that lead to the in, in induction of the induction of the abortion. Okay, so intra amniotic installation. Write the word intra amniotic installation for what purpose? Yeah, for the abortion purpose. legal type of abortion because it is advised by the trained physician got the point no problem now the another you can say we seen that the, if we analyze the color okay if we analyze the color of amniotic fluid it will reveal uh, so many things about the fetus as we said if it is like a pink color it denotes rs incom incom incompatibility if the color of the amniotic fluid is dark it shows uh, the hemorrhages okay and if the color is green color okay the green color uh, that green color uh, shows that there is a problem in the presentation there is a mal presentation fine so we seen about the color so these are the clinical significance so once again just summarize the function of the amniotic fluid the, the function of the amniotic fluid is best understood by this you can see the flow chart that what it, it is contributing during the pregnancy what it contributing during the labor and what is contributing to the clinical findings okay so the, during the pregnancy it's act like a shock absorber because it is surround the developing fetus okay so it's help from the mechanical shocks now it's also helping the even distribution of the temperature because it is surrounding okay so whatever temperature uh, is there it is you can say distribute equally or e e even distribution fine it's also is as its nature is the bactericidal and aseptic it's also help to protect from the intrauterine infection okay and uh, there is no much um, significance of their uh, nutritive uh, property but the one one is the water requirement it is sufficiently provide the water now during the labor it facilitate uh, the labor process the delivery by dilating the cervix okay uh, it's also guard the compression of umbilical cord okay and uh, its nature is the bactericidal got the points no problem now come to the clinical function the clinical function as we seen the amino synthesis technique okay and then another function is the intra amniotic installation intra amniotic installation for men's mean for uh, you can say in this method there is a special chemicals are utilized okay to induce the abortion if uh, if the continued if, if if the mother will continue the pregnancy then it's harmful for her life then in that time this is utilizing some time also what happened if uh, a baby have some problem developing fetus has problem so sometimes certain you can say medicine is directly injected okay directly injected to this amniotic sac fine so till now what we study is let's summarize it we have studied about the fetus, okay? We have studied about the fetus, we have studied about the gestational age, the embryonic age, length of the fetus, age of the fetus, growth of the fetus, okay? We've seen about the amniotic fluid and umbilical cord. We are left with the two topics, 
one is the fetal physiology and another one is a germ layer so which we will discuss after the break so thank you with having me bye have a nice day